Ryan, what do we love? We love ghost stories. And what do we have? We have people with ghost stories. So what are we going to do? We're going to listen to those ghost stories. Let's get spooky. Let's get spooky. I have a disturbing tale for you, gentlemen. Tell us. Oh, am I supposed to say I'm Sarah Ben and Casa and I have a disturbing tale for you? You don't have to. Also, I'm going to keep this whole part right here. <laughs> this right, there's no way you will put this part in. <laughs> I will. One million percent. It will begin just like this. Zero percent. Sarah Ben and Casa, we heard you have a story for us. <laughs> I do. I'm Sarah Ben and Casa and I have a disturbing tale for you gentlemen. Ooh. Okay, so picture it, Los Angeles, 2020, a real fucking nightmare. <laughs> can I swear yeah. on the yeah, show? Yeah, you can swear, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know why I, I thought it was going to be so much further in the past, but. It's like a few months ago. <laughs> 2022. It is, uh, it is January 2021. Wait, are you us, just guessing at something that's going to happen? imagine 2020? Like, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> imagine two weeks ago and then like three months before that. <laughs> so I'm in Los Angeles, California, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, wow, this does not seem to be going well for anyone. I can't go to St. Bart's on a private plane. Uh, so the only other option is to move to New Jersey. <laughs> and this is where our horror begins. Oh. So my family's back in New Jersey and, and it's September, October. And I go, I'm going to move. I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't think I should live with my parents because that will be stressful for everyone. And we might turn into demons and, and uh, do weird things in the house. And, uh, you know, that'll be sad. Uh, emotionally, not literally. Anyway, so um, somebody says, hey, a friend of a friend has a lead on a place where you can stay, which is the place in which I currently am. And um, it's also raining outside. So if you're hearing, I don't know if, you, if it's picking up on the rain. I don't know if the Yeti is picking up on the rain, but just I, let that be part of it. Yeah, I am. I was wondering, I was like, do I hear this only in my brain? <laughs> is this, does she have sound effects <laughs> to <laughs> help with this story? <laughs> the year was 2020. Piddle, paddle, piddle, paddle, piddle, paddle. <laughs> so they said, hey, there is uh, an apartment you can move into. Um, it's two beds, two and a half baths, washer, dryer, uh, dishwasher, all these things that to somebody who's lived in small apartments in Los Angeles for several years that I'm dying. I'm like central air. What? Okay, let's go. And they say, um, uh, the, there was an older woman who owned the place, um, but she passed away pre Rona. She passed away. Um, it's been cleaned out. And um, it's still furnished with her stuff. Uh, her personal effects, aside from the stuff, has been sold. But you can have it. And she didn't die in the house. Everybody I talked to about this place emphasized that she did not die in the house, which made me believe that she 100% died in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she like, died in the house. She was 100% died in the house. So she led, uh, I'll call her Annie. That was not her real name, but she's a ghost and can't consent. And so, and consent is important to us. So uh, I she can't consent to her naming you, so I'm going to call her Annie. So Annie was in her 80s. She was a teacher, apparently very beloved, had a wonderful life, had a lot of friends, would go up on trips to the Cape, actually, New England boys, um, with her pals. She was really loved by the neighbors. She was a good person, I think, and led a very good life. And um, so I uh, said, okay, yeah, sure. Like, oh, it's furnished? That's great. So I put my stuff in storage in LA. I moved here. Now, did I make a lot of ghost jokes before moving in? Yes. But I come from people who are Catholic, who 100% believe in magic and ghosts and uh, are still slightly loyal to uh, a deeply corrupt international crime syndicate uh, that they pretend is about loving God. 
So it's not a big deal that there might be ghosts here. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, there's probably the ghosts. Hottest take we've ever had. <laughs> it's great. I'll make it political. Go Never heard them. anything more accurate in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you so, really tricked me with it too. You came around. <laughs> I feel I feel personally attacked somehow. Like I was I was leaning in, be like, whoa, oh, oh yeah, okay. there it is. There All it right. Is. Well, I, I grew up with, and I think maybe maybe you guys did too. I'm not sure. Um, it was very common to go, oh yeah, that that cabin that uh, our school goes to every year, it's definitely haunted. Or like, oh yeah, that house, that farmhouse that the person owns, or that old apartment they're in, like, yeah, it's haunted. Uh, it's a nice ghost though. Like I heard so many things like that when I was growing up in Jersey near all these Revolutionary War battle sites. It was just like, yeah, yeah. does the house have ghosts in it? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course it does. It's old. Yeah, whatever. Like it wasn't a big thing. So I thought, oh yeah, of course her, her ghost will be there. And I moved in. It's lovely. This place is awesome. And I, I noticed a few things um, right away, which was that there were a lot of noises at night. But that happens a lot in any kind of apartment, right? Like, have you guys ever been kind of freaked out the first few nights you stay in a new place because you hear things? Yeah. yeah it's pipe, it's the house settling, it's whatever it is. It's a squirrel in the attic, whatever. Um, it's an old woman in the attic, like what, you know, this wait. is usual. Yeah, wait a minute, what was the second thing you said? Deeply yeah. unwell sister who's been wait trapped a in a bedroom for no, years. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're breaking up. Um, <laughs> squirrel in the attic, that beautiful children's story. I, I understood that part and then all the other ones were terrifying. <laughs> Demons in the basement, you know. No, okay, we gotta go. Yeah. Dibbix okay. in the sewer, uh, gin in the trees it happens <laughs> so i really was having a lot of trouble sleeping and people were like oh it's the stress of everything that's how it is for everybody and i was like i don't know man something's up i feel weird now uh i should add a few things one is that uh, i have one of the rooms has a bed that is totally new the other one the bed frame was hers and the box spring was hers but the mattress is new matt's face is amazing he did not like that <laughs> He's not like that. I loved it. I, I loved, loved it. it. I, I, I didn't like where it, where it seemed loved to go it. and then where it went. I didn't like the journey or the destination. I would so, have been very much on board with same bed frame, different mattress. You are in the clear. <laughs> There's a, also, she had, I think we have the same taste in furniture. I lean more towards mid century modern Danish sort of influence stuff, but also I love old lady stuff. So I love her old lady furniture so much that I, I bought some of it that I can bring to my next abode with me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm still getting vibes. I'm feeling kind of weird. And there's, cer there's certain artistic things in the house that are not my favorite. And one uh, is this, this, this painting. I don't love uh, this. <laughs> no, thank you. Unsub unsubscribe can you uh yeah so what? it's a just in case this is ever just audio let's just take a second to describe this painting this is a uh it looks like a young i would say four to five year old boy um very well dressed mm -hmm. um he, he affluent to say the least um sketching some sort of a, a drawing right maybe or maybe writing his abcs or maybe he's he's using a pen on paper it looks like and he's writing a full-blown manifesto it looks like he's writing a he's writing, novel it, might, it could be a like manifesto. the youngest person you've ever seen write a novel is writing a novel yeah he's, he's outside a, yeah he's a, he's definitely he's outside and he, he's outside in the fall um you can see the dead trees behind him <laughs> and the gray sky behind him and then you can see the uh probably somewhat maybe a year younger uh sister i assume i hope it's not a date um I, this this girl is in a uh, a little white dress clinging to his back yeah, i i would assume this is a, a sister and brother portrait they share was, trauma. Like it's pretty clear that they are being yeah. similarly torn yeah. up, probably. Yeah. It's 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 cute. It's cute, but it's also terrifying. They're looking right at us. Or me. Oh I yeah. I also had a very quick flash of fear when you were like, let's describe it for people who can't see it. 
where you were going to describe a painting, but it wasn't the one I saw. Oh my God. And I'm like, so there's 15 like, buses. Yeah. It looks uh, like old school buses in front of a farmhouse. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I see children on a date right now. <laughs> so there's spooky dead white children. Yeah. And yeah, my friend, Rebecca Donahue, very funny comedian, and I were talking and I showed it to her and she has a fear of British children, always has. Because Same. She, she thinks they're all ghosts. Yep, they are all ghosts. Um, they all it, died 40 years ago. Small white British children, really, she's just very, finds them frightening because she thinks they're all dead. But, yeah. you know, yeah. there's, there's they, spooks who walk among us. They clomp around in their little stupid shoes that are loud. <laughs> Oh, the Harry Potter films were very difficult for her because she yeah. was like, what the early ones? Because she's like, they, these are ghosts. These I are could never good. understand why they were in any danger. I was like, they're all dead. <laughs> they can't, you can't so get where did killed you, twice. Wait, hold on. Where did you find that paint, oh, painting? It was just hanging. It's hanging, or it was hanging uh, above the uh, living room couch. Very okay. comfortable. Okay. But you know, always, I found it very disconcerting at first. Yeah. So... I started to get little vibes, not evil vibes, but little vibes of like, is somebody else here? And then I thought, oh, I'm just being paranoid or afraid or acknowledging the terrifying reality of being a woman living alone in America or probably anywhere. And then I was like, well, that's a downer. Um, let's go back to ghost stuff. Maybe it's a ghost. And <laughs> I kind of walked around. I felt very strange. The first indication I had that the she might still be here or something because people have said to me well maybe it's i don't think it's a ghost it's some energetic remnant because i consulted two witches about this don't worry about it not and worried that sounds totally normal so there was a her master closet which still has a lot of her things in it like folded and put away matt hates it every time <laughs> i mention that there's an object that was hers including like everything that's here matt gets very like doesn't like it you know like joke i'm very scared i don't my two biggest fears are british children and old women <laughs> So you, you hate them on either end, but your favorite thing is middle-aged bitches. That's yeah. Ooh, like, not a problem. <laughs> like, there know, it yeah. is. A demonic, There's Italian. A demonic middle-aged nightmare all day. Hey. Sign me up. Somebody get that guy some adult DVDs. But a woman in a rocking chair who's rocking and then all of a sudden isn't rocking anymore. The worst. Or a, a whimsical <laughs> child who's playing with a doll and then disappears. You don't yeah, think those that dead, They got dead doll eyes already. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, so it was a little weird and people were like, oh, that thing's haunted. I was like, nah. Um, uh, her, one day I was looking at her closet and I was like, I'm gonna peek in here. And I, I had opened it before and just been like, oh, okay. And I opened it up and the light was on and I assure you I had not turned the light on. And I was like, all right, that's weird. I'm gonna turn that off. And, uh, they're just in one bathroom. I felt sort of odd. The bathroom that would have been hers, that would have been in the, the sort of ensuite bathroom that was hers in one of the rooms. And her um, exercise bicycle is still there. And I was kind of like, I feel like she might still be hanging out. It just felt a little weird. It was sort of, there was one time when I uh, went, I speak at, at universities sometimes about mental health awareness, <laughs> lending a whole lot of veracity to my ghost story, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, um, I was in Virginia. And Ro was I in Roanoke? I think so. And I walked into this beautiful old hotel and it was empty except for the desk staff. But I really looked around because I felt like I had walked into Grand Central Station at rush hour. Like there was just, I felt like there were a lot of people there. It was very strange. And I described the feeling to somebody and they were like, oh, there's ghosts there. And I was like, what? And then I looked it up and it's this notoriously haunted um, old yeah, everybody I've talked to since is like, yeah, everybody knows that place is real haunted. And I was like, okay, I didn't feel like, uh, so it, it wasn't, um, it didn't feel like that. It felt like one person. Like it, uh, I was just like, all right, somebody else is hanging out. Like I have a ghost roommate. What do I do about this? So, um, I, you know, I, I didn't do the whole clearing and cleansing spell stuff. Um, right when I moved in, which would have been a good idea. I just was like, hey, I'm here and I'm not gonna mess anything up. Uh, uh, I hope that's all right, which is what my friend's mom did with their ghost when we were 13 and it worked out fine. Um, Cause that was a little boy ghost that kept like opening stuff and giggling all the time. And she was like, this is weirding me out. And then uh, I won't mess up your house. And he was like, okay, and stopped. So I was, that didn't work though. So one day, one day I was cooking at my 
oven stove situation where Juan often cooks. I think I was baking. And um, behind me, I hear this noise that sounded like somebody had picked up my cat's food dish and dropped it from the ceiling, like a smash sound. Not like, oh, I accidentally stepped on something. Like it was a, um, it was, it was wild. So I'll show you. I turned around and I was like, what? And I looked and I'm like, is something, I really thought something had dropped from the ceiling. And I looked and my cat's dish, which you'll recognize this is like a common item from the 80s. This was not Annie's. This was from um, my mom's house. So it, it looked like this. Remember this? It's, oh, yeah. Not, yeah. Don't worry. It's got remnants of a black candle and it burned for protection. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so this, it just, I looked and it looked like this. Just. It and was it on the floor? Was, yeah, it had been there normally, like looking like this. Um, was not broken. <laughs> was doing just fine for months. And uh, I was cooking and I just heard, it was like somebody went <clears throat> and I heard that noise. And then I turned around and it was laying like this. Whoa. And I was like, oh, okay. There's a ghost in my house and I need to handle this. So I consulted two friends who are witches. One of them lives in St. Louis. One of them's in Los Angeles. And I said, well, I, I also asked Twitter like you do. I was like, does this sound like a ghost thing? And one person was like, well, maybe it had a hairline fracture. Those things crack. And everybody else was just like, no, that's a ghost. Like everybody else on Twitter um, was just like, like, you know, all strangers, people from as far as I can tell, various different backgrounds were like, that's a ghost. And I was like, okay, so what do I do? So I, what I got was like, oh, this is what my grandma did, but it was great. Cause it was all these different people's grandma. This is what my nana did. This is what my abuela did. This is what my Nana did. Like all these different, I got like the United Nations of grandma techniques for getting rid of <laughs> ghosts. And it was the best. Yeah. Um, everyone was united in try. This was before the elections. People are stressed anyway. And I think they just wanted a way, you know, I think they appreciated the chance to think about other things. So yeah. I had so many different like old fashioned remedies and all of them had to do with basically cleaning and um, the kind of, it, they all had to do with cleansing. They all had to do in some way, literally or figuratively, but often literally like get Florida water and use that. Um, get, uh, you know, smoke cleanse. Different cultures have um, different forms of smoke cleansing where you have an, a, an herb bundle or kind of sacred wood or whatever it may be. Do that. Um, light a candle that's this color. Light a candle that's this color. Say this prayer. Uh, put a, a, a horseshoe that's this size upside down. Take a broom that's upside down. Like so many different things. It was actually really cool and uh, write a letter to the ghost and then burn it. Stand in the middle of your house. So what I did was I took, combined some advice from different friends. And um, my friend, Melissa Sinova, who is a former social worker and um, head of HR, also tarot card reader and author. She's great. She writes tarot card books. She gave me some advice. So did my friend, Amanda Yates Garcia, who's the Oracle of Los Angeles. She has a great book called um, Initiated. And I sort of combined it all together. So what I did was I went from room to room and I vacuumed, which Melissa told me to do. And I was like, are you just fucking telling me that? Cause you think I don't vacuum. Cause you know, I don't vacuum to stay in my house. She was like, no, it helps. And I was like, you're fucking lying. And she was like, no, it does help though. And I was like, but you want me to vacuum. And she was like, yeah, vacuuming's good. Also, yeah. you should vacuum. And I was like, Two Fine. ghosts with one stone. <laughs> So I vacuumed um, every room in the house. I vacuumed. I lit a candle in it. And uh, I said uh, a little prayer in the room. And I said, like, hey, if you want to stay and be a good roommate, you are absolutely welcome to stay. However, your time here is gone. And otherwise, you really do need to move along because you've got other work to do. So I got to set a boundary with you here. She said, basically, talk to her like you would to a roommate. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I was going to say, that's not so much a prayer as it was a full-blown roommate threat. Yeah, well, I said like a little prayer myself. Oh, okay, because it, it began with, hey. Hey, <laughs> <Just> not... <laughs> guess what? Here's the thing. And then I, uh, and I didn't feel silly the whole time. I just thought, I thought it was fun. I was like, this is, this is funny and it's fun 
and also I feel better. Ritual, the act of ritual makes um, the intangible almost tangible briefly, and it can be very healing. So whether there's actually a spirit here or I'm just full of fucking anxiety right now for a lot of reasons, this doing this is going to bring me some some satisfaction. You know, half yes, Mulder, yes. half Scully. This is where I live in the Venn diagram center. And of course, yeah. And it's a good time. So I did that in every room in the house, started at the bottom, went up um, into the rest of the house. And um, I did a little bit of, uh, in each room, did a little bit of smoke cleansing with an herb bundle as well. And um, came back down. And then I had a, uh, a broom, like a handmade broom that I had bought from my friend's shop. And I just like opened the front door and you sweep out any energy that's not supposed to be in the house. And so then I shut the door and I put the broom down and I was like, I was like, all right, now what do I do with, with this? So I was like, all right, what, I don't know what Annie would like to eat, but um, like maybe I'll leave candy out for the ghost as like a, a peace offering. So I was like, what do I have? I've leftover mini Kit Kats from Halloween. So I put this in my kitchen and I lit a candle in a place where I knew that um, if the candle knocked over, it wouldn't burn anything. And I left a, a miniature Kit Kat and I was like, hey, I know you can't eat this, but this is for you. I hope we're cool now. And I also, I'm going to put back, I'm going to put the, because I had taken the, I should have added that prior to these shenanigans happening i had taken the children painting down and and put it away oh. so i was like all right and you know what else i'm gonna put the kids painting back so i put that back in order and i was like but i am gonna take this other painting and put my friend's painting up i hope that's cool but i felt like there was something about the kids painting that was important yeah, um same. And then it was cool and it's been cool since then and the next after a couple of days i was like i think i'm gonna eat this kit kat because you can't eat it and um you eat yeah. it. She she just, she's watching you in the corner. Like, and she just goes, "Give me a break." <laughs> you, like, what a great reference! <laughs> oh, Annie, you, you were paying attention in the eighties. She mugs. She mugs to a camera and immediately signs on for ten more seasons of her of her ghost show, <laughs> where, she, where she remembers taglines to old candy. <laughs> That's your ideal ghost. Yeah, you I gotta find know. out the pic. You gotta find out who the two kids are. Well, I put a photo of it on the internet, and people said, "Oh, we had a reproduction of that painting. They're called the the Bowden children. B O not not Bowden like Bowden Maine, but B O W D E N. I should actually look that up right now. Uh, the Bowden yeah. children. I can't believe I haven't even looked it up because I thought it might. I was like, is this some family antique? And then I realized, oh no, it's a um, it's a reproduction. I guess, you know, she had some cool reproductions. Okay. Let me see. I'm looking. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, oh, it was um, John Hopner. Interesting. It's a painting from 1803. Mm -hmm. And maybe she just liked it, but I felt like there must have been some kind of emotional significance there. Maybe, I, maybe it was a gift or maybe it that reminded her of somebody. Who knows? That could be it because she didn't have kids, but she um, was very good to like her. She was well, an educator. And then she also had like, I think, godchildren and extent was very much in touch with her extended family. So just what you just said, she didn't have kids and you took a picture of kids down off the wall and she was an educator to children and you took a picture. I mean, maybe she just liked the comfort of seeing a picture of children yeah was, that was her life's work i guess was educating kids and also it you know it may have been something that was very soothing for her to look at or to relax yeah. around or maybe she saw the original somewhere on some trip like i think she traveled internationally and so so that was you know i put it back in its place and it's been there ever since Can I, i'd like to suggest if you ever get another pet that you name it Bowden. <laughs> That's really sweet. Then, then Annie won't throw their pet dishes all over the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> I was like, Annie, I mean, 
she has gone to town on my cat Polly. Polly, the demon queen, <laughs> has gone to town on some of Annie's old furniture, I which I purchased. Say, she did attack the pets thing. Like it is a mm. uh, you cleaned, and she's probably like, "That's great, thanks for cleaning." But like, it's this creature I don't want <laughs> scratching well, up my shit. Thanks for the vacuum. <laughs> scratching up her stuff and i'm like i'm gonna need to get some of this upholstery repaired because i keep oh. the cat's nails clean clipped but then they grow and i don't i really should be clipping them weekly but uh you know what i'm a new cat owner i'm just trying hey. to do my best hey, yeah <laughs> and yeah so this actually is helping me understand like ryan that was really insightful matt you've said nothing insightful um <laughs> but ryan that was very insightful about the connection with the children because now also i don't mind it when i see it i'm like oh yeah this is part of my home yeah. that i'm in and i always say i've i've said i don't say it as much anymore because i don't feel like she's here but um, I would say thank you for making such a beautiful home, like because she decorated it so well. Um, in my opinion, I love old lady style, and it's just very warm and comfortable. The vibe of the home is not negative at all. Um, and when I first moved in, my witch friend did magic stuff with her magic brain and was like, I think something is still hanging around there, but that home has really good energy. And I was like, okay, that's exactly how I so feel. I wish that I could have gotten to, I don't want her ghost to talk to me, but I, w I wish I could have gotten to talk to her. She seems so interesting. You are the first yeah. person, um, it is, it's so interesting because you, you're the first person whose story is, is recent and you're still in the place mm -hmm. where it happened. Um, yeah. Because most people are like, I remember, you know, when I was in college, this happened or you know, when we first got married, we were in this house and this happened, but um, it's like for you to be telling this and I'm just looking behind you at like a that place stuff. that's furnished with this woman's things. It's, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah. It's cool. And it all, it's also funny to me because you were like, I don't necessarily want to talk to her or communicate with her or anything like that. But, it, you know, hearing your story, my first thought when you said that was, oh, I'm sorry, you definitely have been talking to her <laughs> you definitely I'm have been talk back i'm afraid for her to talk back in language i can understand she yeah. did yeah. You know, i think that was a when i i do think that some element of her broke this this dish in a very sort of like hey you know yeah. i'm gonna get your attention kind of way and notice me. yeah notice me like i got something i got something to say and I said, okay, Jerry Blank, I am ready to find this out. But it, so she did communicate, and I, 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 in, I think, and the fact that there has not been big things since then, I think indicates that I responded appropriately. Yeah. Um, I, I think so, for sure. And to the point where right now I was just about to ask you, like, hey, will you and you and Annie, if, if will you come back? Maybe we wait a little while. And if anything, if you have any updates, even if it's like a, a two minute update, uh, will you bring it to us whenever it happens? Because I'm so intrigued by all of this. Yeah, and, I would love to. And I, mean, I there's there's something to me that says like you having all of her there are possessions of hers in your home right now that that's something like matt was saying we haven't we haven't talked to anybody that is in your situation i'm so intrigued by it so i hope if you, if you feel anything or i i almost just want to say like in a month can we come back and talk to you and be like is there anything that that you can tell us even if there's nothing and it's fun to talk to you anyway yeah, I would love to. That would be, so I'm, I am honored. That would be awesome. Matt, did you see that? What? The, on the stairwell? <laughs> I've honestly, I couldn't even, I can't even pretend to go along with that because the whole time, that he's the whole time out. Sarah's been talking, I've been looking around your house like you're, like this is just paranormal activity six. <laughs> yeah. Like I just keep waiting for the mirror to like just slightly move or a chair and like for me to just go like <gasps> clink. Yeah, just You're just like, the, the slightest change. Do I seem weirdly chill about it? You do. Yeah, it you is, were like, uh huh. 
I think I'm the most disturbed by that. <laughs> I think it's because of being raised among people who really brought a lot of old world superstitious beliefs here and yeah. like didn't really see, I mean, my dad works in, he's been working um, with a team that's, that's working on vaccines. Like he works in the pharmaceutical industry. He started out in the birth wow. control factory uh, and worked his way up. Um, and he's been at the same company for, you know, oh God, 38 years. And he didn't, wow. he, he was supposed to retire. And then his boss was like, can you stay? We have to make a vaccine for this pandemic. And my dad was like, all right. So he like stayed to help this big team. And, and this dude, big fan of science, uh, big not fan of science deniers, but he, my whole life has been like, yeah, ghosts could be real. I don't know. I believe people when they say they saw them. Because whether it's a ghost or it's just something they saw, it's important. But yeah, I think I think people, whatever. And he's his thing was always, well, I think it would be egotistical for me to assume that I know the totality of what's possible, right, in the yeah. world. And if it's all fake, that's cool. And I, I've asked before, like, do you do you worry about what happens after we die? And he's like, no, because if there's nothing, I won't know. I'll be dead. And mm -hmm. if there's something, then I'll find out. And that attitude uh, from this Irish Catholic man who made birth control for most of my life, um, <laughs> which was a treat. The old having, birth control factory you described. A lot it. of birth control t-shirts in the house. A lot of orphans. I, was just I, low. Oh, I didn't know there was merch. The, oh, honey. The cookie jar was yes. always full. We had a, uh, my mom always tells we had a, an umbrella that's was from some drug and it it was to do with the reproductive system uh and it said it was for doctors you know the, the pharma reps go and they give the doctor swag and are like yeah. sell this yeah. drug to your people and and doctors are like oh i got a pen okay this was a, an umbrella that said power potency and penetration <laughs> and yeah. it's like saying that as we're walking into our parish my mom yeah. was like take that away put that down and yeah. one time I forgot my but softball. It's raining. Yeah, I know. My I was like, all right. And one time I got forgot my softball hat. Um, and my dad just grabbed one that kind of looked like it. So I was like playing third base wearing a, a birth control merch hat. So like ortho tricycling low. How appropriate. And, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Right. You know what I'm talking uh, about? The bases. <laughs> You know yeah, what I'm talking about? Passion. You got an umbrella oh, that keeps you from getting wet, but these other things that help you get wet. You know what I'm talking about? It all makes sense. Is this how like <laughs> girls get fingered in Boston? Because I feel like it's just a lot of this in the North End. So oh my so, God. Just, yeah. You know, all then, five fingers. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just this and then you back off. It's at a Bruins game and it's to stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like during the bean. It's for the good. <laughs> Listen, I just really like to always bring fingering into the fingering has entered the chat. Yeah. Is that Gall, and, Gall and I are, are usually can talk, will respond to anything, but there's a long pause when you did that and held up your hands where we were like, I'm both like, I don't know if we should respond. How do we? That's, that's what I bring. I was like, I'm sure there's a joke here. Let her lead, man. Yeah, let yeah. her lead. <laughs> 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 You, you take it. That's what I, <laughs> that's, that's my, uh, you know, never taken an improv class in my life. Can you believe <laughs> it? Can't, yeah. can't and I won't. Yes, you, you've taken the biggest improv class of all. Life. <laughs> oh. oh, God. And then I just start bleeding from my nose and I die. And yeah, you die right there. <laughs> My like God. How, do I, how do I yes and uh, this ghost in my house? <laughs> like, all right, um, tell me more you did. about it. You did. You cleaned. You did. You like. You truly. I didn't try to defeat her. I went with the energy. I was yeah. like, all right, I get it. Like how? Because I really did think, like, how would I feel if some fucking broad just moved into my house and I'm dead? But I picked out all this broad. shit. <laughs> Hey, you broad. She, We're she back was... at the Italian dinner in the North End. Yeah. You know, bro. Hey, you broad. I'll take four <laughs> tortellinis. Two ravioli. So I'll take broad some touching gap. my haunted children's reproduction painting off the wall. I got that framed at a Sears. 
Those are the bo- hey, those are, hey, watch your language. Those are the Bowden kids. Those are the Bowden kids. Bowden. He was the youngest author in all of Yorkshire. He's, he's writing a poem, and his sister is encouraging him. His sister was the first human backpack. <laughs> he would wear her around the town, her clinging to his back, writing his yeah. little stories. And it's late fall. I told you that because the trees are down. Yeah, they're It's they're late wet. fall. They're all Foliage wet. is over. There's no autumn. She replaces it with a leopard throw pillow on the wall, which isn't even where pillows go. So you I can't like, do leopard, leopard print with plaid. Who does that? So Who I does that? A, so I broke a fucking dish. Stairs. There's somebody on your stairs. <laughs> There's nobody on my stairs. 